Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So last year I went on a trip to Shenzhen and I've already made two videos of the series and this is basically the last video, unless you want me to make another one, but stick around until the end to learn what that could be about. Um, so the last video of the series is actually maybe the most interesting and that's my visit to the Allnet offices. Now I was there multiple days and we worked on all kinds of stuff. But in this video, we'll take a look at my trip to Shenzhen as a whole, and also like walking around in Shenzhen and going to the tech markets and maybe the food and things like that. And we'll take a look at what Allnet actually does in the process next to arranging a contact and everything with the PCB supplier and the assembly plant. Because after the assembly plant, everything goes to Allnet and they do the final steps on the hardware. So starting off, we started in the Netherlands and I went on this trip with my friend Tom, who you've also seen in the previous videos and who'll probably show up in this video again. So we left from Schiphol in Amsterdam and we had a flight with one stop over in Frankfurt. And the interesting one thing was we left in the morning here in the Netherlands around nine o'clock and we arrived in Shenzhen around seven o'clock in the morning. So if we were able to sleep on the plane, we basically wouldn't have any jet lag. And what do you have it? The plane was almost completely empty. Now, I don't know how that's economic or good for the environment, but we both claimed a row for ourselves. So we both had at least eight hours of sleep during the flight. So that was excellent. So arriving in China, we arrived at Shenzhen Bao International Airport and our friends from Allnet picked us up and our hotel was right in the middle of Shenzhen or the uh, Guazhang Bay Plaza. And I keep seeing and I'll try and do that less. One of the first things that I noticed is the amount of high rises, especially if you glance over the city like this I've never seen a city like this, not in the Netherlands, but I've been to like America and other places many times. And this is something else. There's like, like there's like high rises look, that would be very high for here in the Netherlands and very dense. And then they, they like quadruple that in height and in density and everything. It was really amazing to see. And uh, the city from everything we experienced just functions, at least the parts we were, and it was really impressive to see. So that was the view from our hotel window actually. And we went down to Guajing Bay Plaza to visit one of the tech markets that are around there. Here you can see an overview of one of the first tech markets we went to. And these tech markets are something different, or at least I've never seen anything like this here in the Netherlands or in, again in America or any place I've been. They are multi-story packed to the brim with all kinds of small shops and anything and everything electronics related you need, they've got it. You want some power supplies in varying sizes and shapes and forms? Sure, no problem. They've got them all in different voltages and everything in stock. Oh, you want fiber optical cable? Sure, no problem. What kind of fiber optical cable do you need? We have a whole shop full of them. No, wait, you want copper cable. Well, do you want a lug with that copper cable? We've got everything from very small to enormous. No problem at all. Or do you need some new tools because your tool broke or you just don't have the right tool? Don't worry. We have a whole shop full of all kinds of weird tools like, I don't know what. It's really, if you're walking around there, like it's a, it's, it's a real life version of AliExpress. It, they've got everything and everything's in stock and in the stores. And if it's not, well, they can get it for you and it'll be in there next day. Here is a, a shop Tom visited like five years ago and he paid them a visit and they actually still remember them. And we bought some nice uh, Arduino expansion boards and things like that over there. So after perusing in that electronics mall for a few hours, actually, we went to get some food and we happened to stumble across this place with ha which had a sort of buffet style food. And it's amazing. You can get good food 
for like one or two dollars for a full plate. But we'll talk more about food later in the video. After that, we went to a uh, telecom shop and we got an extra SIM card for Tom's phone. I could actually use my um, Dutch SIM card with uh, a special, I think it was $30 for 10 gigs for a week uh, subscription for my Dutch provider. So I used that and Tom got an extra SIM card. He got like 50 gigs for 25 bucks or something. Pretty cheap, worked great. Then we had a, a nice meal, evening meal with our friends from Allnet again. And I even got this funny milk tea drink because I asked for something sugar free. They're definitely not as adapted as we Western folk for sugar free drinks, but you know, okay. And funnily enough, walking in uh, Guajong Bay, Guajong Bay, I'm going to butcher this name a lot during the video, sorry. Uh, the plaza, we saw a public welfare piano room. What? What? But during the week, we actually saw people using it. So that was cool. And here is a shot of the night view of uh, Shenzhen City from Guajang Bay Plaza. It was really nice to see. It was awesome. There was lights everywhere. On the second day, we got some food. And then we went to the electronics mall that's right next to the hotel. There they have floors and floors of stuff and this mall was organized in like you want a camera you go to this floor or you want tvs you go to that floor or you want leds there is a whole floor where you can walk around for like hours just for leds and these shops have everything right there whatever type or length you're looking for they've got it and if they don't They'll get it for you in like 15 or 30 minutes from some warehouse or other shop nearby. No problem. It was awesome to walk around there and see all the types you know you will see on AliExpress or other places. But then in real life, you need some LED cable? No problem, man. We've got you. How many what, hundreds of meters do you need? <laughs> this shop actually helped me out with some supplies I was looking for while I was there and I was building some testing and other equipment with Allnet. And they actually offered me a supply. I said, okay, I need 24 volt and 10 amps. But, and then they were like, ah, but we have three types. Do you want the plastic one, which will do nowhere near what it says on there? Do you want the more premium aluminum one, which will do more, but still not really what it says on there? Or do you want one that actually said, does what it says on there? And they, they really don't care or mind. They'll tell you all the details and like, yeah, yeah, it says 20 amps on there, but it, it'll do five continuous. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. And so I got what I needed and that was awesome. I even managed to find some of these uh, pigtails, which I had been looking for for a while already. Then we paid a visit to Allnet. We actually went there multiple days, but that doesn't really matter. Here is a photo with Norbert, the owner of Allnet China, who I talk to often. And here is part of the team that is directly involved with working on the uh, Quinn LED boards in flashing, testing, or shipping them. They have trays and trays of Quinn LED ESP32 boards prepared. And here is the flashing station we currently use to pre-flash the boards with WLED. For fun, I actually shot a video of me flashing a few boards and I marked them with a Q on there as a sort of special edition. Let me know down in the comments if you've actually received one of these boards. I'd love to know. Then I had a bit more fun and we actually had a big order for Dr. Aziz standing by to ship out. So I left him a little personal note on the box. And in the last category of specials, I also signed some cards that come with the dig to go with my signature. 
So again, if you got one of these special editions, uh, this would have been around November last year already. Um, let me know in the comments, that, that'd be really funny. So after flashing, which also tests the ESP32 and the, the USB to serial and the USB-C port, all boards or all Quinn LED ESP32s are paired with a DIG board, so a DIG Uno or a DIG Quad. And then the board as a whole, so the DIG Quad for instance, uh, paired with an ESP32 are put into a testing jig and the testing jig automatically activates all output ports to check if everything is working correctly. Using these testing jigs and actually testing each and every board combination that goes out there, we try to minimize the failures of boards that people receive. I really spent a lot of time at Allnet during the week I was there, and we talked about a lot of things like the procedures or shipping costs. Since December of last year, they now have full iOSS integration, which means that shipping to Europe is now pre-taxed at their end instead of uh, post-taxed at the customer end, which would incur a lot of fees, especially in some countries. So that should already have lowered the total price of receiving your package a lot. Now I know shipping can still sometimes be expensive. We're continuously looking into options for that, but especially like shipping a Dig Octa, it's, it's just a big and heavy box. So it's gonna cost something. We'll never stop trying to look for cheaper ways and maybe if we get enough volume and can set it up like local distribution in the EU, but it's hard to make that cheaper than what it currently is basically. That's why it's not yet a thing. Here is another one of the electronics malls we went there. There are so many of them, but this one was specialized in phone repair and this is one of the floors. I think the sixth or the seventh floor even, it is huge and there's so many people there and they have so much stock of all kinds of different variants it's insane and if you need a new case for your apple your iphone or your, your ipad or your macbook or some kind of other repair no problem whatsoever tom had an iwatch which was already um four years or five years old i don't know a little bit older and the battery was getting really bad and well in the netherlands is you're just you know tough luck but there you just walk to one of the random guys doing apple repairs and they're and you ask like hey can you give me a new battery and they're like sure give me 15 minutes and they didn't mind if we watched and they really professionally replaced the battery and did an awesome job and it really really improved the battery life of his iWatch. so a few more things that amazed me during my trip to shenzhen crosswalks they have these giant roads and crosswalks there with thousands of people on them at the same time walking straight through each other and somehow it just works public transportation with the metro and the trains was also excellent and very easy and then the amount of scooters everywhere there were scooters everywhere you could see but they were all electric a few years ago everything was replaced no more noisy gas scooters or whatever you call them in english i don't know uh, in, in that city everything is electric most cars are even electric excellent and the food there was lots of high quality food i really enjoyed it one of the things i didn't enjoy is that some of the meats still had the bones inside like in chicken meat and stuff that took some getting used to but other than that the food was really high quality and very cheap i mean it's like a tenth of what it would cost over here and it was the same or even better quality i didn't get sick although i have gotten sick on other trips to other countries so that was great one thing that can be interesting though are the toilets if you need to go number two ask if they have a western style toilet or make sure your hotel has one ah the signs there are signs everywhere, and since Shenzhen is somewhat internationally oriented, most of them have English translations on there. I had a lot of laughs with that. 
They have signs for everything. Oh, and I saw a Zeker 001 there for the first time. I kind of want one now. The LEDs at night in the city and on Guajang Bay, the plaza and everywhere were awesome to see. Oh, one last thing that also amazed me over there were the packages. At the end of the workday, seemingly all those workers from all those tech malls come out at the same time or something, and they all have dozens of packages with them, and the whole street is filled with carts and peoples and scooters and everything filled with a random amount of packages and they all get collected in these trucks and <laughs> go somewhere and somehow all the packages end up where they need to go. It's an amazing sight to see. Maybe this is how all those AliExpress packages go everywhere, I have no clue. I don't think so, they have great uh, giant warehouses now I think. But it was amazing to see. If you need some kind of package or a component and you need it the next day, well, that is definitely how it works. Some guy or worker will get your package and almost deliver it as amazing. Everything's amazing. <laughs> like hundreds of people at the same time walking with dozens of packages. I don't know, man, somehow it works. And well, that's already the end of my video. Hopefully you enjoyed coming along on my tour, first to the PCB factory, then to the assembly plant, and in this video to Allnet to see what they all do for the Quinn LED products. Like the flashing, the checking, and in the end, shipping it to you, my customers. And well, thank you for watching again. I hope to return to Shenzhen later this year again to work with Allnet on some new interesting product ideas to make your current LED installs even better. Oh. And there is a secret fourth video that hasn't been edited yet. If you want it, leave at least 10 comments with the word Queenergy in there, and I will make a video of a visit I did while I was there with Tom uh, to a battery manufacturing plant like the Queenergy, Queenergy battery I've been building, or haven't been building really. So, ten I don't know, I'm trying this YouTube stuff. 10 comments and I'll make a video about it. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you guys next time.